Hey guys and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be talking about wideband O2 sensors. Now these are the LSU 4.9 sensors from Bosch and these are what uh, comes with most of the aftermarket kits where you're converting your car to EFI. What I have learned after going through many many of these O2 sensors is that where you place the O2 sensor in the exhaust is much more important than originally thought. Now moisture coming out of your exhaust I believe is the number one factor for what kills these sensors. This is my thinking about these O2 sensors. This one was on the driver's side and it lasts and lasts and lasts, no problem. This one was on the passenger side and you see how much shinier it is there. And to me, that says that this one was being washed with water on a regular basis. Now these sensors are about the exact same age. So they should be about the same in coloration or whatever. But um, this is the sensor that kept going out on that side and they, they just never got dirty and, and what I'm thinking is is it was just constantly washed with the exhaust water and so I'm going to show you where I had them placed and where I've ended up moving moving them to and uh, how we how I attempted to resolve this issue so let's get the car in here and get it up on the lift and I'll, I'll show you what I found Okay guys, let's talk about the O2 journey in this car. Well, there's the factory location. And that's actually where I started with my O2 sensors. And they didn't last very long. Neither side lasted very long. And this was with the Innovate system. I had the DLG1, the dual gauge. Okay, second iteration. Talked to Chris Richards, he said move them back. Two feet back and put them between the nine o'clock and three o'clock position. So that's what I did here. Went pretty close to the three o'clock position on both sides. And this one was okay. This one lasted, no problem. This one I lost two sensors, both to the Innovate. Uh, at that point, I switched to Zetronics. The Zetronics system lasted pretty good for about six months. Then I lost this sensor again. Okay, so what I thought was I'll just try moving them up to the very top. And so that's what I did now. In this position, I've had pretty good luck so far, knock on wood. Uh, hopefully they'll last. But I'm going to tell you my, my thought process behind this. If you look at the curvature of this pipe, as it comes out of the header there, it comes down, and there's this bend, which, you know, logically would say it's going to press and push the, it's going to push the moisture to the outside bend of the pipe. Well, I mean, that's where the fastest airflow or water or whatever was traveling in the pipe is going to be, in the outside bend. So it's going to press and push that moisture to the outside bend of the pipe. Well, it makes sense that it would, this one will be whitewashed constantly. So I think what I did was made it even worse by putting it in this location versus where it was here. And there it's more in a neutral part of the pipe, more on the inside bend. And <laughs> so you would think the moisture would go more on the outside of the pipe was what I'm talking about. Now, why didn't this happen on the driver's side? On the driver's side, our outside bend is here. So all the moisture is gonna be pressed down to this part of the pipe, which is on the opposite side of where the O2 sensor is. So that's why I believe this one lasted and the one on the passenger side did not. But at any rate, I went ahead and moved my O2 sensor as vertical as I possibly could, as close to that 12 o'clock position as I comfortably could and still have room, you know, to maneuver everything and be able to change the sensors and everything like that. So that's my logic here, guys, is make sure you put your O2 sensor as vertical as possible and as close to the inside of a bend as possible. And they also state that you wanna be within, say, 18 to 24 inches from your collector. So that's how I chose this location. It's about 20 inches from my collector there. Same for this side. So guys, take a lot of care in where you place your O2 sensors because it's going to 
reflect in the life of your O2 sensor. These wideband sensors are very sensitive. I've heard others say that the Zetronic system treats the sensors much more gingerly than the Innovate system does. And I've had good luck with Zetronic so far. And, and I will say guys, Zetronics versus Innovate. Innovate, you have to calibrate your sensors both before you use them and every so many thousand miles, 5,000 miles, I think it is. And with Zetronics, just literally just plug and play. You just install them and then you never touch them again. So that's my main reason for going with Zetronics at this point. And I've had good luck so far. And guys, if you do have an O2 sensor that's close to a turbo or somewhere where it's just in a really hot condition where you think it's overheating and that's why you're losing sensors, I've created the extreme heat sink here for O2 sensors. It's a threaded bung that you weld to your pipe. And then this heat sink will thread over threaded bung. And it works really well. Uh, and check out this clip I have here from a previous video. You can see how much difference it makes. It's nearly 100 degrees. have a situation where you think you need an extreme heat sink these are available on my website thisoldfarmshop.com just go there and, and give and check it out all right guys i hope this was helpful please like and subscribe and let me know if you have any questions or comments as always guys thanks for watching and have a great day